Hi, I'm Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. So this will be about Louis DeJoy. Now I had done a reading on Louis DeJoy, DeJoy before, so I'm going to be using some of the information uh, from that and I'm going to update it with this uh, new uh, couple of blurbs uh, from the FBI about their uh, subpoena. Here we go. Okay, so Louis DeJoy was born in 1957, same year I was born, but he was born in Brooklyn, New York, but earned a bachelor's degree in business administration in uh, Central Florida. Uh, 1983 to 2014, he was CEO of a North Carolina-based logistics company, you know, shipping company, and retired after the company was acquired for reported $615 million. He certainly has been more productive than I have. Uh, he donated $1.2 million both to 45's 2020 campaign and the Republican Party since 2016, so total $2.4 million. Uh, 2001, an audit found that the Postal Service gave his company, the Postal Service gave DeJoy's company, a non-competitive contract of more than $300 million in 1992. If the bidding had been competitive, taxpayers could have saved up to $53 million. Uh, 2020, the Postal Service Board of Governors, all selected by number 45, uh, and confirmed by the Republican Majority Senate, announced him, DeJoy, as Postmaster General and CEO, despite concerns about conflicts of interest. Uh, he did not go through the normal vetting process, and initially two separate search firms used by the USPS and the State Postal Service Board did not mention him in their list of candidates. Uh, his financial position, well, he did invest uh, shares in UPS, UPS, United Parcel Service, and Amazon before taking on his role, but he did not divest his 30 to $75 million equity stake in a subcontractor for the Postal Service. With him as Postmaster General, he increased business with that subcontractor. Additionally, he sold Amazon shares but purchased stock options in Amazon, representing 20 and 100% of his prior holdings. The Postal Service prioritizes Amazon package delivery. Um, he is the first postmaster in 20 years without prior experience in the U.S. Postal Service. Twenty twenty, NBC News wrote, an audit raises questions about whether DeJoy's company knowingly overbilled the Postal Service. The Washington Post and the New York Times reported that according to former employees at his logistics company, he participated in a straw donor scheme. If you don't know what a straw donor, donor scheme is, Google it. Meaning, or I'll tell you, uh, reimbursing employees for making political donations, how? Employees, particularly managers, were expected to contribute to fundraisers for the Republican candidates and organizations. Then they would be reimbursed in full through company bonuses. So the latest is that FBI has interviewed his employees and have subpoenaed DeJoy for information to which his choices seems to be perhaps declaring um, the Fifth Amendment or surrendering to the subpoena and through the information found risking self-incrimination. DeJoy's spokesman says DeJoy has never knowingly violated any laws. As Postmaster General, he instituted banning overtime, forbidding late or extra trips to deliver mail, removed hundreds of high-speed mail sorting machines and mail collection boxes, causing significant delays of mail delivery. These changes were implemented during the COVID-19 pandemic and the 2020 election where mail-in voting was extensively used. So that's our buddy, that's our friend, uh, Louis DeJoy. So let's see what the cards have to say. So this is the Crow Tarot by MJ Cullinan. I suppose that's how that's pronounced. And uh, they come in a really nice sturdy box. Um, if you got this as a gift, you feel like, you know, that was a nice gift. The uh, guidebook is pretty interesting. Uh, it has uh, good uh, suggestions on how to use these cards for divination. And then right in the back here, it talks about 
the artist and the author of Crow Tarot. And it just says that Margot Jones, so that is MJ in the MJ Cullinan, is a Seattle-based artist, writer, mother, and lover of all things magical, especially Crow. She attended Parsons School of Design, yet her unique te uh, technique of telling stories through digital collage is self-taught and has been her passion for over 10 years. And I don't know that's as of when. Um, nature and its creatures are a familiar theme in MJ's work. However, having grown up in the south of Boston, her collages are heavily influenced by the energy of the city. Her work often merges the two worlds. Her path into the world of tarot was a beautiful accident that came out of a difficult time in her life. The process of creating Crow Tarot helped her rediscover her own wings, though at the time she didn't realize how life-changing the project would become. She simply fell in love with the process, the messages, and the feeling uh, each card revoked. The Crow Tarot, MJ's first published deck, has achieved a significant following and recognition with Crow lovers and the tarot community. When MJ is not making art or writing for her Crow Tarot blog, She's spending time with her daughter River, playing in nature, practicing magic, and finding new sources of inspiration. So I love that, to, to know a little bit about the artist. And uh, like I say, the descriptions here are useful in the divination, especially when so much thought is going into the cards. The, the cards themselves are just really amazing. I love using these cards a lot. They've got a sort of a, an antique uh, kind of patina to the cards. I mean, it's not really a patina because it's fake. But you can see how each card has a little wornness about it that kind of makes them uh, fun to use. And they're beautiful cards. And, you know, what, the reason I do this is for those folks who don't get to see uh, full decks of tarot cards very often, at least this way you get a little preview of some of these cards. And uh, it's a nice way to uh, shuffle up the cards without damaging them. I like to keep my cards in good shape as long as I can. And um, so that is the Crow Tarot. Um very interesting about this DeJoy character. You would have thought that he'd uh, bail as soon as Trump was out, but he hasn't. And what do we know about uh, Trump is he didn't want to leave his office, and many presume that's because that's where he had the most protection, and uh, and he couldn't get um, you know prosecuted because he had Barr as his attorney general. But with DeJoy, why doesn't he want to leave the office? Is he trying to take plenty of time to figure out how he can hide all his crimes while he's still in there or destroy evidence of them? How's he going to destroy the people that know what he did? So there we go. So Louis DeJoy, Louis DeJoy. And I guess the question is going to be, and I love what Glenn Kirshner said on one of his videos uh, talking about this. He said, uh, DeJoy's the job is in the jeopardy. I love that. I think I might use that as a title for this uh, video. The joys to job is in the jeopardy. Okay, so let's find out. What do we want to ask? Will Louis to joy uh, be? Well, let's just ask. Will he be found? Will he pay? No, let's see. It's got to be really direct. Louis to joy. Will he? Will it be found that the joy uh, is guilty of manipulating the postal service for his uh, benefit? and for the benefit of uh, Trump. Will DeJoy be found uh, guilty of manipulating, manipulating the Postal Service for his own benefit or and for the benefit of Trump uh, in that uh, campaign? Will DeJoy be found out about maneuvering the Postal Service for his benefit and for Trump's re-election campaign? I like that. So we're going to do six cards right away, and then we'll do a few more at the end. Four more to finish the Celtic Cross. Two, three, four, five, and six. Interesting. How these people just feel like they can crime endlessly, and they'll never be, uh, you know, held responsible. Amazing. Amazing how emboldened they are. So the... Um, Signifier card for this then, and the question then is this, will DeJoy be found uh, uh, out about um, uh, manipulating the Postal Service to benefit himself and for the benefit of Trump's campaign? That's a big question. Let's see if we can get it under one 10-card uh, uh, Celtic Cross draw. The signifier card for that then is, well, okay, bundling. So the 10 of uh, wands is uh, carrying a heavy load, uh, bundling everything up together, but you found a way to do it. You, you found a way to bundle up all these issues uh, uh, and uh, and move them uh, forward. It looks like you could drop them at any minute, but I've got to tell you, crows are very, very persistent in their pursuit. So the signifier card is moving a large bundle of issues forward. The um, signifier card for that then is, um, let's see, the Knight of Cups. 
So the signifier of the challenge, I'm sorry, not the challenge to um, the signifier of him uh, being the Ten of Wands, uh, bundling up these problems and moving forward. The challenge to that is the Knight of Cups. So what is a knight? A knight is the enforcer of the royal uh, suite. Uh, he, uh, this knight is bringing forward a big cup of, um, you know, emotion. Um, and and moving it forward. So the challenge to moving this bundle forward is the knight standing in his way. It has to be the government, I would think. Then the um, base of this reading is the King of Pentacles. King of Pentacles is, um, you know, really, you know, having the value, having what it takes to um, to use all the value that's at your disposal. Um, I'm going to leave it at that. The past of this reading then is the five the five of swords so the five of swords is betrayal uh theft um yeah so in the past we had uh betrayal and theft it's very clear uh in the sky of this reading is the hangman so right now that's the position he's in and that's the best position he can stay in to keep things suspended in time while he looks around for a different way to um to uh to see this problem yep i think that's uh that's pretty accurate the hangman Put him under here. Hope you all can see all of that. Okay. Then the likely outcome for all of this in this first part of the Celtic Cross is going to be the King of Swords. So it looks like the King of Swords is um, pretty determined. Swords of Truth, Justice, Rules, Law, and uh, so the King of Swords. Uh, I'm going to say uh, is uh, is uh, you know law. King of Swords is the one who's going to prevail so far in this. So let's take uh, the next four cards uh, out of this and see what the self is of this question. Will Louis DeJoy be uh, found out for manipulating the Postal Service to his advantage and and um, to uh, benefit Trump's uh, re-election campaign? The self of that question, that's a double barrel loaded question. So let's see how this works out. Is uh, the Four of Wands, you know, the Four of Wands our celebrations. So we're asking uh, if DeJoy will be found out, and we have uh, in this uh, respect celebrations, small celebrations. Um, these are plans moving forward. I like to think of them as a step in a series of steps to the big celebration. So uh, this is celebrations for justice right here. But what is that in the environment of? That justice is in the environment of uh, five, six, seven of Pentacles. Seven of Pentacles is always wondering, did I do enough? Have I taken enough? So this is uh, Justice saying, have we gathered enough information? And that's exactly what they're in the middle of doing right now, is gathering even more. So there we have that. The um, hopes and the fears of that, then, are hmm, the Nine of Swords. So the Nine of Swords are nightmares. I mean, really, a lot to get through. Um, it seems to me like these crows, if they're trying to fly through this, uh, this, this fence of swords, uh, that could be their worst, worst nightmare. So uh, that sounds like uh, that is applicable. And then the sky, the final outcome for this reading then is likely uh, the page of wands. The page of wands is taking a, a plan, taking an idea and moving it forward. So I will say for, for justice, uh, yeah, they're going to prevail and move this uh, situation forward in the investigation of Lewis DeJoy. That's how it seems to me. So if you're wondering if Lewis DeJoy is going to be brought to justice, I'll just tell you this. It started out with a signifier of him being, you know, moving a heavy bundle of a lot of issues forward very tenuously. Those could fall at any minute. Okay. Um, then we came to the self of the issue, which was the, well, in the sky for that. So Louis DeJoy, it looks like the best he could hope for would be to stall this thing, to give himself time to figure out what to do next. That was in the sky for the first part of that Celtic cross. But then for the self of the question, which would be the self of, ju of justice, uh, we found small celebrations, the four of wands. So I'd like to think of those, like I said, as uh, stepping stone celebrations on the way to a bigger victory. Um, they, were ch they were in the environment of uh, the seven of coin, which is, you know, have I done enough? Should I have collected enough? Did I get enough information? And that's justice talking here. Uh, justice is going to have to proceed carefully with this nine of swords to make sure they don't uh, cut off any of these issues. And likely, DeJoy is going to have to worry about trying to fly through those swords because he'll get chopped to pieces if he does. And then the likely outcome of the whole thing, the final outcome, is the page of wands, which is justice carrying an issue forward. So it looks like it'll be one of those two, either um, 
uh, campaign fraud, manipulating the Postal Service, or uh, for his and uh, Trump's benefit. We'll see what happens with that. I, I, my money's on campaign fraud. I'm Mark, My Journey Through Tarot. Tomorrow's another day. Stop by. We'll do it again. Ciao for now.